What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of Love After Like Up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's do that again. Love at the Lockup, Life at the Lockup, Season 2, Episode Goddamn 43, uh, uh, Between a Rock and a Hard Place. So on this episode, we got, of course, Megan, Michael, and Sarah. Um, I got some shit to say about that because, you know, Michael really fucking tried at this episode. Okay, we got Marcelino and Brittany, and then we got Cheryl and Josh and Lacey and John. Did we get anybody else? And a little bit of Clint. Let's just get Clint and um, Goddess out the way. Truth be told, you know, somebody said, um, basically, in the comments, somebody, I seen the comments saying, along the fact that, um, WeTV is kind of like, they exploiting, the, you know, the situation with Clint and Cheryl, I mean, Clint and, um, 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 Tracy. I don't think they exploiting it because they knew what they were signing on for, um, People sign up for shit knowing that their life is fucked up, okay? You signed up to get on this show to, you know, for the attention. So, therefore, I don't feel sorry that they're on this TV putting their shit out there like that. But I do feel sorry for the situation. Because, bitch, the shit just make you sad, okay? It just make you sad at this point. Because, you know, when you be rooting for people and then they just backfire. And, you know, addiction, I guess... This is just showing if you want to take a lesson from Clint and, um, you know, uh, um, Tracy, it's just basically showing that addiction is something that is real. OK, and it is hard to kick. And once an addict, you're always an addict. You can be clean for 15, 20 years and it takes that one thing that trigger you to go right back. I was just looking at this on the L word. Listen, the L word Generation Q test. Tess was clean for two plus years, right? She was sober as hell. She wasn't drinking no alcohol, but the bitch was working at a goddamn bar. I said, girl, what? Okay, that shows your resistance. That shows your strength and everything. And then Shane then fucked her bitch. Okay, she then found out about that and then went and had a relapse. I said, ain't that about a bitch? God damn, Shane, keep your legs closed, okay? And keep your hand to yourself. God damn, okay? You know, it just takes one thing to trigger you. It really do. And I feel so sorry because it's not a laughing matter. Addiction is not a laughing matter. But God damn, let me just tell you this. These parents on this show, the parents are not for the bullshit, okay? Clint decided to go ahead and tell his mama and his daddy what was going on. First of all, he just wanted to tell the mama. All right, mama, I got some news to tell you. It's about Tracy. Oh, no, what happened? Tracy, she locked up for the drugs again. Motherfucking Greg. No, no, that's not what he said. But he just told her that it's for drugs. Here go, Tra uh, um, um, Clint Mama. Oh, are you serious? I really started to like and have a fun feeling of Tracy. I said, bitch, since when? You really wasn't feeling Tracy, but you probably did. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just soften up a little bit over time when you see the struggle and you see them trying and you like, well, fuck it. She ain't going nowhere, so I might as well try to like the bitch. You know what I'm saying? And then at this point, the daddy popped up. She was like, well, your daddy outside. You might as well tell him what's going on. You know, he really didn't want to, but the, he told daddy. And daddy was like, what is this, like the third, sixth time that she didn't got locked up for the same goddamn thing? When you gonna get through your head that you need to let this shit go and you need to find something better. It was like, I was like, ooh, you know, the parents were fed up, okay? Basically, what we got from that, the parents want him out that situation. The parents want him to do, the parents want him to do better. And Clint knows that he can do better, but the heart wants what the heart wants, and he just can't let Tracy go. You know, so he's in a tough situation. You, it is not easy to let people go. Sometimes you know that you're not supposed to be with a bitch or a nigga or a man or a woman or whatever you want to call them. You're not supposed to be with this person, but it's something about them that keeps drawing you to it, and you just can't let go. That's why people stay in abusive relationships and toxic ass relationship and Clint and Tracy is in a toxic relationship it may be a lot of love but just because you love somebody don't mean that you need to be with them okay be friends on the low low you know what I'm saying break it off a little bit but now they got to figure out whether or not Tracy really finna go down there like girl it's a mess it's a mess then you want to know who else a mess John Shane and Lacey <laughs> Shane is outside. His friend just pulled up, okay? 
and you know, trying to get him through what's going on. All right, so he's sitting outside and he reminiscing about everything that happened. You know, he feel a little bad for the way that he came in his boot. Okay, that's my wife. I shouldn't be talking to her like that. You know what I'm saying? And so Tracy, I mean Lacey, pull up and basically she was like, "He's God." <laughs> You don't have to worry about him anymore. He was like, first of all, before you say anything, I just want to let you know that I apologize for the way that I came at you. You know, I shouldn't be talking to you like that. You're my wife and everything. And I don't want to be disrespecting you like that. Okay, but I just want to let you know that, um, John, he's God. He's God. Okay, you don't have to worry about him in our life anymore. Like, he's God. And then Shane automatically went to, he did. <laughs> because she said they found him with needles and drugs and you know stuff like that and Shane said so what you mean he did I said damn Shane <laughs> not jail but is he dead she was like no 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 and he, she was like prison he was like yeah he's got and I just don't know how long he's gonna be knocked up because you know he's 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 out on parole and I was like girl girl he ain't finna be gone that long because I seen him in the previews. I seen that nigga in the previews. Now, they was about to fight. Shane and Jane was gonna fight. Okay, Shane and John, I should say. Girl, it did that you see the little blurb <clears throat> when Lacey was talking to her friend and told her that, uh, you know, they went, <laughs> oh my God, we got our names tattooed on each other. And like, I let Shane pick the location. And, you know, at first I was going to get John's name tattooed on my wrist. I only got the J. But now I have Shane's whole name on my pelvic. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, mine's a little bit small on my on, on, on me. But my name on him is kind of big. <laughs> I was like, you know what? <laughs> me and the friend looking at Lacey like this. Y'all, I got stuff in my tooth and y'all weren't going to say shit. God damn. It's gone. Hold on. This some ghetto shit. I ain't finna stop this camera. We family. We family by now, bitch. We, 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 we done gone through the trenches by now, okay? Girl, if it's there, it's still there. Anyway, um, girl, what was it? Piece of lettuce. Anyway, so moving on from that, <laughs> I was like, girl, John, you know, um, Lacey, you're not over John and you really need to be over John at this point because it's getting tiring. Like you are inviting unneeded drama to your life. Okay. And like I said last week, I understand the fact that y'all been together since high school and y'all known each other and y'all friends or whatever, but out of respect for your husband, out of respect for your husband and you seen the way that he treated your husband and the fact that you put them in this position, you should have stepped away from him and let him heal on his own because that's what he needs. He is using you as a crush and you are using him as a crush. Okay. And now they trying to say that Shane, Shane got some issues or some problems or whatever that he didn't um, let her know about, you know, he didn't did some shit. I can't wait to find out what the fuck it is. It better be something juicy next week, okay? Don't let it be, well, I didn't do this and I did. Girl, what you didn't do? Did you fuck somebody else? Because that's what it sound like. That's what it sound like, okay? But, um, you know, moving on from that, that was basically all that was going on with um Lacey and uh, 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 Shane. But anyway, um, Cheryl and goddamn Josh. Girl... Cheryl need her ass whipped, okay? Because even though she don't like Tina, Tina was really not trying to give her the fever this episode. Tina was playing down the law because it's her house, all right? And she came at her, out her side, out the side of her neck, real kind of rude like, and I did not like that, okay? I did not like that. Girl, first of all, Cheryl calling Josh, she on the way to him, three miles away from him, and the car broke down, and they done told the car with all her shit up inside it, okay, she was like, you're gonna have to come down here and get me, it was like, well, um, my mama gonna have to come down here and get you with me, too, because, uh, she the one that got the car, it was like, damn, you know, I would have walked over there, but it's like three miles, it's gonna take like 40 minutes, he gonna say, damn, it takes you 40 minutes to walk three miles, I said, bitch, <laughs> How long is it supposed to take? Girl, you just don't know. It's hot outside, so you're going to have to slow it up or whatever. You don't want the girl to fall the fuck out. Okay? He was like, oh, well, I'll be at there and get you in like 10 minutes or so. Goddamn. You know, my mom going to be there just to let you know. 
fuck. I said, you know, um, quit thinking about the negative. And see, that's the problem with Cheryl. Cheryl thinks about the negative all the goddamn time, especially when it comes to Tina. You have an issue with somebody. Why you still, you know, you, you make it heightened when you keep thinking about what the worst can happen instead of thinking about the positive. Girl, just say what you got to say and let it go. If the bitch come out her neck, then you come out your neck at that hoe. But if she didn't, you just be calm, cool, and fucking collected. She is about to let you stay up in her goddamn house with your son. Okay? Now, um, I thought she had more than one kid. So where the other ones at? I bet the baby daddy said no. I guess. I guess the baby daddy said no. Because she only brought the little boy, Brandon. He like three years old. Kind of disturbed me when they was at the house. And I said, uh, Mama Tina. Mama Tina. Mama Tina. You don't believe in a dust, uh, a dust pan, a broom, and a mop, and soap and water? You don't believe in pine saw or whatever? You don't believe in waxing the goddamn floor, bitch? You don't believe in a vacuum? Because I did not understand why the floor was so damn dirty. And how do I know this? Because the back of that little boy feet was black as shit i said you what is this what is this go clean his feet y'all got him playing all up in the bed and the bug beds and shit i said strip the bed take the beds off and go uh um, go, go wash them sheets put extra sheet uh a uh, uh, new bed spread on there okay speaking of i gotta do that too i'm gonna do that as soon as i finish this you know what i'm saying you know can't be talking about other people's shit and can't um get my own shit together you know i was just like why is his feet so black I knew I wasn't the only one that saw that. I see the simple little stuff. Okay, they sitting in the living room. And mind you, Tina didn't already see it. So how long y'all gonna be staying here? First of all, y'all not gonna be staying here for months and shit on end. So don't get comfortable. Bitch, I give y'all three days. Not even a fucking week. Not even a work week, which is five days, okay? For, uh, uh, normally five days, all right? Girl, she said three, okay? That's what's gonna happen. Um, And why you here... What y'all gonna be doing? Okay, because I gotta go to work. You know what I'm saying? What y'all gonna be doing? Well, we gonna have a realtor come over. We going over there. We gonna be looking for some houses, some apartments, or whatever. Trying to get out of here. You know, doing what we gotta do. And um, Tina said, okay, cool. Because then Josh was like, listen, so we gonna need to use the car tomorrow. And I was like, what you need to use my car? Uh, so we can go around looking at houses and shit, apartments or whatever. Unless you wanna drive us around. She was like, oh, hell no. Nah. It was like, okay then. And then she was like, okay, so let me put the rules down, all right? Now, Tina didn't come out her neck. She just said, so why y'all gonna be here? Don't expect nothing from me, okay? I just want y'all to know, eh, y'all grown people. Because that's basically how she was saying it. She was saying it like, you are grown, and so therefore, you have two hands, and you have two feet, and um, you got legs and everything, and you're very much able-bodied. So therefore, I'm not about to be cleaning up behind you, but you're going to clean up behind yourself. I'm not going to be cooking for you. You're going to be cooking for yourself. And just make sure that he's back home before 9 o'clock, because 9 o'clock is the curfew. And here goes Cheryl. Well, goddamn, thank you for telling me what my man curfew is. Like, I don't even fucking know what the fuck his curfew is. Now they fucking goddamn clock. I said, goddamn, Cheryl, what are you coming out your throat like that for? She wasn't being rude when she said that. I know somebody going to try to make it seem like she was trying to be rude, but I didn't take it that way. She was just making sure, reiterating the laws in her goddamn house, okay? Y'all got to respect that shit, and she just making sure that you know, okay? Because sometimes time can get away from you, let you know. He got to be home by 9 o'clock, okay? We don't want the police coming here. We don't want the, um, 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 ankle monitor to beep and beep, 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 okay? Because he ain't here. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, why are you coming out your throat? That lady wasn't trying to be rude to you, even though she said in her little confessional, in her little interview thing, talk about some bitch, I don't, I get in one motherfucking month, okay? Now, see, they done broke up multiple times already, and they just ain't ready. They just ain't ready. I don't think Josh really want to fuck with her like that. Josh said, you know, she the only bitch that stayed loyal to him like that, so therefore, that's why he's still with her. He said, I decided to give her some, another chance. I done put this much time and effort into it now, and she done stuck around this long. I might as well just go ahead and go for the ride. I said, I guess. I guess if you want to look at it that way, you know, sound like you're settling, but okay, you know. Um, and I feel like Mama Tina probably know that that shit ain't gonna last. I feel like it ain't gonna last either. I said, Cheryl, you need your ass whooped. Okay, somebody needs to punch you in your face and push your tooth back into place. Okay, that's what needs to happen. Anyway, moving on from that, let's get to, um... Marcelino and Brittany. <laughs> Excuse me. 
um, Marcelino and Brittany. So, Brittany is out here playing with her little uh, daughter, talking to her son. She got her um, youngest sister out there in Vegas. You know, she moved out there to Vegas to help um, her mother adjust and take care of her, whatever, since she got into that little house fire that burnt up 80% of her body. And, you know, she's going through the sober, trying to remain on the sober track or whatever, that sober living. Okay, so she's helping her. So, she, all of this is still fresh. Brittany wants to tell her mom at this particular time, you know, that, oh, excuse me, Gassy, wants to tell her that, um, listen, bitch, I'm going to tell you all the shit, like, all the shit, the gritty details, the grimy details, bitch, the, the, um, uh, fucked up details about my life and what happened when I had to, um, run away and y'all wasn't there for me and all that shit. Now, the sister and Marcelino was like, I mean, I understand that you want to tell her this, but do you feel like this is the right time? Because, you know, she's just now getting her life back on track, and I don't think this is the right moment because she it, it's all new. It's all fresh. You know, just give it some time. And sometimes I, I get what they're talking about, and I get where they're coming from, but at this point, you know, sometimes you just got to go ahead and go for the gusto and rip the, um, rip the Band-Aid off, okay? Um, quit putting it off, quit putting it off, quit putting it off, and just keep on, just, just go ahead and do it. And that's what basically Brittany was thinking about. So Brittany go down there and she tell her mom and they outside at this little area, at this picnic table or whatever. And, you know, she's telling her like, you know, when I was 12 years old and I ran away, you know, I fucked around and got with this man, like this old ass man. And he did all this shit to me. And that was the dude that was like the father of my first two kids. Okay. This motherfucker was 30 years old with a 12 year old bitch. I paused because I knew I had a feeling. I had. <sighs> Y'all know how I feel about this bitch. Y'all know how I feel about this. I can't stand when I hear about children being taken advantage of. And that's basically what Brittany was saying. And I kind of figured that's what she was um, leaning towards. And she wanted to tell her mama this. And that's why they didn't want her to say anything. Because like I said. That could trigger her mom to relapse or whatever, but you do have to confront the past and you have to confront, you know, the truth of the people that you hurt. And this is this is part of Britney's hurt. This is part of her healing, getting this off her chest and letting her mama know, listen, I didn't have y'all as parents, okay? Y'all was high, y'all was drunk as shit. You didn't even realize that I was gone. You didn't protect me when I needed to be protected. So therefore, I look for protection and, 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 and love and all this other stuff elsewhere in the streets or whatever and i'm out here fucking around with grown ass men you are fucking 30 years old and you fucking around with a 12 year old god that is some nasty shit bitch nasty what the fuck and then she was like and then introducing me to other men and all this shit. i said oh my god was she sex trafficked and everything girl it was just making me bad my nerves was up here like oh my god i felt so bad for britney because i figured some shit like that was going on i i was waiting for her to basically say that he was her pimp okay that's what it was and um you know um <clears throat> She was like, they had me doing all these crimes and stuff because they figured I was a kid and I was going to get away with it. And that's where her record started coming up. She was like, you know, people look at me and be like, oh, you was in jail. Uh. It was like, I was in jail because people was making me do shit. Okay. I wasn't like no 12 year old or whatever thinking like, oh, let me go out here and rob this. Let me go out here and fuck this up and all this shit. No, that's not what it was. Okay. I got fucked up and got and put into situations that I shouldn't have been in by grown ass motherfucking men. I said, oh my God, the mama was feeling some type of way. She was feeling sad and she was trying to say sorry. She was like, girl, I don't need you to feel sorry. I just need you to understand where I'm coming from. And I feel like the mama took it well. She took it better than she took the last conversation that happened on the last week's episode. And then she took her to this little area. She was like, you see these little brushes or whatever? This is where I slept at at night. I had my little um, sleeping bag, and this is where I had to sleep at. I said, oh, my God, Brittany, girl, damn. You went through a lot. You went through a lot, and it's understandable now that you with Marcelino, old ass, okay? And he a little control freak, too, okay? So now I get it. I said, girl, hmm. I mean, he a little upper, you know, a little bit better. Okay, because he's taking care of you, but, you know, he got his ways. And I was like, yeah, you got a little, you got a type. You got a type, bitch. And I understand that. I was like, oh, but I'm glad that they working on their relationship. There's no time like now. Okay, but moving on from that. <clears throat> Who else up in this motherfucker? Goddamn Angela and Tony. Tony then slept in the car. Now, at first, I said, bitch, where'd you get a car at to sleep in? All right. This, I didn't realize that it was Angela's car 
until Angela got out and went in the car and drove off. I said, bitch, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You kick him out your house, okay? You kick him out your house and you burned up half his shit and you tell him to get the fuck on. He rolls off on the bike that you drove. I mean, you brought him, okay? And then, and then you let him sleep up in your car. Bitch, fuck me, no. Okay, it wouldn't be me, bitch. I don't give a fuck if you parole here or not. You should have fucking thought about that, bitch. I put your ass back in jail with a fucking quickness, okay? Don't play with me, bitch. See, Angela, that's how I know you want. That's how I know you on some bullshit. Because you would have, because, bitch, anybody else would have been like, bitch, fuck that nigga. Fuck that bitch. I'm finna put his ass back up in motherfucking jail, bitch. You out there fucking around with tricks and hoes and bitch. And if they tricks, whatever, nine out of ten, they got drugs up in there. You ain't even supposed to be around that shit. I'm snitching on your ass, okay? Girl, I give in addictive like that you hurt me bitch i'm gonna hurt your ass back take your ass back to jail where the fuck you belong okay and well i should have kept your ass at bitch but anyway he come knocking on the door angela angela like for real and he in the interview like talking about something she can't kick me out of our house because it's our house and i'm parole here i said bitch you in this word our okay um, uh, you got your, you got your, it's fucked up. This possession? No, it's not our house. It's her house. Her name is on the deed. Her name is on the note. She's the one that's paying the bills, bitch. You are a guest. That's what you are. A unwanted guest, but you are a guest. Okay, girl. Angela all up in his face like, what? What, Tony? Bitch, if y'all don't go watch Bondi Blue video where she do love after lockup, because she be doing Angela voice. Girl, I can't. I can't. Girl, I was like, Angela, don't let him up in that house, because I see you got your little scrubs on and everything, like your little uniform, like you finna go to work. And then when it came up, something told me, you know, when they t um, put the uh, intro to the characters up, and then they put their age and their name and where they from and what they do. She's a mental health therapist. And, bitch, you need a therapist your goddamn self to understand why the fuck you doing what you doing, okay? Girl, are you serious? You trying to help other people, bitch? You got a little mental shit going on upstairs, and you fucking around with Tony, okay? And then gonna, um, you know, let him convince he, uh, her to let him in the house to go wash his ass, okay? So he can go to work. And she was like, you can come in the house, but, bitch, just be gone by the time I get home at 5 o'clock. I said, all right, Angela. Mm-hmm. I see you. And Donna our homegirl, that's my homegirl, okay? Because Donna Faye be giving it to you straight, no chase, bitch. She was like, girl, so you just going to let that motherfucker back in? You going to let him come in? You going to let him do his shower? You going to let him sleep up in the bed? You let him sleep up in the car? You going to let him fuck on you? You going to let him do all this other stuff? Why are you so dumb? The bitch is using your ass, um, goddamn Angela. He was, she was like, I believe that love heals all. She said, bitch, that's a crock of shit. I was dying laughing when Donna said that. I said, Donna, tell Tell her again, bitch. You dumb. Okay? She said the heart won't what the heart wants. Now, listen. At first, I was going to burn the wedding rings. Okay? But I decided against that, and I just went on ahead and put them on my finger. I said, girl. Girl. <laughs> why are you so dumb? Okay? But is she really? I mean, you know. I'm saying dumb loosely, but it's a lot of uh, people out here that do some crazy shit for love, okay? You know, sometimes your mind is telling you one thing, but your heart is telling you another thing. And uh, the D must be good. She finally got a taste of that, and she like, he makes me laugh. <laughs> Donna Faye look like, so you going to let him stay because he, he, he makes you laugh? He makes, girl, if you don't get the fuck up out of my face. Donna Faye was ready to get up out there, okay? She said, my sister, goddamn, Lord help her. <laughs> <laughs> I like me some Donna Faye, girl. But anyway, that was them. Now let's get to this goddamn Sarah, Michael, and goddamn Megan, okay? So let's just do Sarah right quick. Sarah, you know, she got her little um, freaking girl dress on or whatever, her little black dress, her little black cocktail dress or whatever. And, um, you know, her friend, the um one that I feel like is the lesbian that want to fuck her, okay? Because you can't tell me no difference, girl. She's screaming it. She's screaming it. Everything about her appearance and everything that she's doing, she's screaming it. That I want to fuck this bitch, okay? Or they probably had something going on back in college. You just never know, okay? That's cute or whatever. Do what you got to do. Maybe that's your soulmate right there, okay? But, um... 
they go to this little area, this little bar or whatever. I was confused as to what type of bar it was because it was like a little restaurant in the back. I seen some tables in the back. But then everybody basically had on, all the men had on, majority of the men had on like suits and ties and shit like that and dress shirts. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And they was all white and everything. It was all white bar. And I'm saying that for a reason. Sarah was like, you know what? I'm single right about now. I said you still married, but technically I get what you're saying. The kids with the grandma, whatever. So we both single at the same time, and that's never really happened. So, bitch, we finna go out here and we finna enjoy ourselves, okay? Fuck Michael and his bullshit. I'm finna cut his phone off because I ain't finna pay the bills no more. I said, bitch, no, you're not. But um, keep on saying that. And at this point in time, Fuck that hoe. We're going to do what we got to do. We finna turn the fuck up. They up there um, dancing at the bar and all this stuff. Aye, aye, mm -hmm. And then this nigga pop up. Nigga for real. A black dude. I was, I was confused. I said, did you walk into the wrong bar? Because I don't think this your scene. It was just so awkwardly placed. I was confused about what was going on. And then a friend keep on nudging Sarah over there to her. I said, I now see Sarah. I know you got to untype. Now, when she was talking to him, I was like, I was trying to listen real hard to see that her black scent come in. Because y'all know that bitch go in and out all the goddamn time. And it comes in on certain parts. Y'all know that. Okay, we've established that shit. And I was like, mm -hmm. What are you doing here? It was just so awkwardly placed. It was like production went and got this random dude off the street and said, go into this bar. Oh, you black. Come on, go into this bar. That's what it felt like. So they chatting it up and all this stuff. They go outside, exchange numbers. She gave him her number. And then in the little confessional, the friend going to say... <laughs> You know, you know, got this ludicrous up here, ludicrous up here. You know, maybe she could have some fun. I didn't like the way she said that. First of all, ludicrous as in the rapper, because they put the subtitles up and they spelled ludicrous as ludicrous the rapper's name. And I was like, so basically you comparing him because he's black. That's what went through my mind, because he's a black guy. He's kind of light skinned a little bit, little caramel. And you try to say that he's ludicrous or whatever. Um, you know, it just felt a little racist to me, a little racial, you know, maybe I'm reaching, but I just felt the way, you know what I'm saying? I was like, girl, I'm going to need you to be quiet and I'm going to need you to go get some pussy or some dick yourself. Okay. And just run along. And then they kiss. I ain't kissing no stranger that I first met. Okay. No, I ain't doing that. I, I, I'm really not doing that because I had a bad experience like that. Some, they breath was just... It turned me off. It turned me off on some shit like that. It was just nasty, okay? But uh, I was just really confused. I was like, no, this just that feels really awkward and set up and fake, okay? Then we go back to Texas. Michael out there talking to Rock. Rock basically trying to imply that he kind of fucked Megan or whatever. And um, they go up in the house, in the um, hotel room, Megan up in there, Megan up in there. Okay, what? We go up there, ask Megan, okay? That's what we're going to do. He was, and, and basically, Megan denying the fact, the fact that she, um, that him and um, her and um, Rock had messed around, you know. And here's on Michael. First of all, you telling me that it was just a kiss. Rock telling me y'all had conversations and all this stuff. The production, they asking, the producer asking, so did y'all have sleep, sex or whatever? Here go Megan. <laughs> no, <laughs> I said, bitch, you lying. I feel like Megan is lying. Megan sucked that man dick or something, okay? They either gave each other head or they uh had penetration happen some type of way. But something happened other than a goddamn kiss. Because I don't see nobody catching no feelings like that. No hood nigga like that catching figures, feel, feelings over his homegirl, his homeboy girl or whatever. But, bitch, you know... Um, Michael had the nerve to get up in his feelings, okay, because that's his homie or whatever. You don't fuck the homie. I get that. I get that. But he up here in his feelings and basically told her, I need loyalty and all this shit. And I said, how the fuck you need loyalty when you can't be loyal your goddamn self? You lied to her about being married. You up here fucking other bitches. You fucking other bitches, nigga. She asked him. So you got other bitches that you talking to? Am I talking to? You talking about me? Yeah. Yeah. I said, oh, and then gonna say she shouldn't be focused on that because I'm not over there with them. I'm 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 using my money to fly out here to be with her. I'm not in that city. I said this nigga is being a this nigga is really on here nigging, okay? He really has no shame. 
Mind you, do you understand, Michael, this is how much of a nigga that he been, okay? And I know some people probably getting offended because I keep on saying that, but I'm just saying, nigga mean ain't shit in this case, okay? Because that motherfucker is just like, on TV, doing his dirt, knowing damn well that Megan and Sarah will be watching this, okay? And you talk about some, you don't want no relationship with somebody just nagging at you like Sarah was doing, and then, um, 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 <clears throat> That's how you feel, you know, with this whole situation with Megan or whatever. And so that's why you're doing what you're doing. Bitch is on the fucking phone with a whole ass other woman. Okay, talking about some, he finna come down there to Miami. He want to send some pictures. Send me some pictures. Oh, you working out. You going to do the moves on me and all this shit. I said, bitch, you just don't give a fuck. Nigga, girl, Michael, I hope whatever bad happened to you. Come to you because you deserve it, okay? Because you, you, you really, you really, you really play in the field. But then again, I got to applaud you because you got these hoes on the hook, okay? Because they paying your shit because, nigga, what job do you have? How did, who, who brought your ticket down there to goddamn floor, uh, uh, Texas? And that bitch that you was on the phone with, she going to probably foot the bill to take your ass down into Miami. Girl, you know, he is a hustler. It is what it is. But that was love after lockup. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about it. And I will see y'all later. Peace.